Hey there to my 21 subscribers, my future subscribers, and all the people that secretly watch me without subscribing. Uh, sorry if I'm fidgeting more than normal, but it's driving me crazy about the glare on my glasses. If anybody has an idea of how to fix that, let me know. And um, today I want to talk about Chapter 3, The Beginning of Education, in my book, Adrift of Ponds. Um, Again, the book is real thin, easy to read. Um, I made it a quick, easy read on purpose so that more people could benefit from it. And um, you could listen to my videos, watch my videos, or get the book, or do both. Um, if you want to just have it to read, I do intend on writing an extended version at some point with more information in it, but um, this is what I have for now, and um, it is available on Amazon if somebody does want to buy it, probably Barnes & Noble and who knows where else, but um, anyway, uh, I want to talk about the beginning of education, because a lot of people think that kids, you know, like they don't put a whole lot of thought into educating them before they start school and the reality is you can start educating your kids while you're still pregnant and um, I mean you, they can't really hear you in the first several months but um, you could still you know talk to them you know communicate with them and just use a nice calm tone of voice so you get used to it and try to avoid negative people because when you're around negative people it um, affects how you're feeling and it will actually affect how the baby's feeling um, when you get to like about six or seven months you can actually talk to the baby and they'll be able to hear you and that's the time when you really want to start concentrating on like reading little books, nursery rhymes, um, reciting the alphabet, counting, um, and just communicating with your baby so that the baby learns to uh, respond to your voice um, and talk to them in a soothing way so that, you know, once they are born, they'll get used to just kind of relaxing and fall asleep easier when they hear your voice. Um, anyway, um, so when you get to about six or seven months, like you could get some like um, little nursery rhyme books or whatever and just make it a habit of reading them and that way once the baby's born you can still recite them without actually having to read them. Um, that way you can look in your baby's eyes and they can watch your face as you're reciting what the stories were or the nursery rhymes or the counting or whatever it is and um, they'll benefit a lot more from that if they can look into your face and watch your face while you tell them the stories and then when they get a little bit older you can hold the books up so they can look at the pages so they can see the colors and the shapes and the words as you're reciting it and it's very important that the kids learn um, all the different shapes and colors and things and and make those connections when they're infants because it'll help them learn later and um, you know, you can sing with them and just kind of, you know, count random things. Like, don't push them to do the counting because they are little kids and they will repeat what you said anyway. So if you just start randomly counting things and they get used to you doing that, they will eventually do it too. And, um, same with the alphabet, you know, if you just make excuses to recite the alphabet, 
and just do it in a happy, playful way and not really push them to do it, they will eventually do it too. Just because they want to copy you, they want to be like you, and um, they want to please you. And so they will do the things that you're doing, and um, yeah, and you know, you, you just, uh, sorry, my phone made noise. Um, <laughs> So anyway, um, also if, if you want your kid to learn a second language, um, the younger you do it, the easier it is for them to learn it. Um, as we get older, it's a little harder for us to learn a new language because we're kind of unlearning in a way because we learn what certain things are called and then when you learn a new language, you're learning it's called something else. and so. It's a lot easier if you do it when they're younger. And, um, I don't know. I had some other things I wanted to say too. And I can't remember what they were. But, um, just whatever you do, make sure you do all these things with all of your kids. Um, a lot of people have a tendency to like really try hard with their first one. And then when they have their second, they feel overwhelmed. And so they don't put as much effort into it. And it's very important that you um, put just as much effort into teaching your second as you ta did teaching your first one. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Um, it's getting warm in here. <laughs> so anyway, um, just, uh, be encouraging to your kids and show them like that learning is fun and then when they get older you know in higher grades and stuff they'll probably want to go to school and want to learn stuff and not be like so against it all the time and um, anyway that's all for now because I forgot what else I was gonna say but um, Anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and um, like, subscribe, tell me whatever you want to tell me, I don't care. <laughs> and um, sorry about my phone, people know what I'm doing and they're still messaging me. So anyway, thank you for your time, bye. I pull up around 745 in my 740 I look at 740 fly I could drove the old school Chevy But my fans are the night So I'm rockstar ready I could have left the VIP waiting for